So in a video that I had recently posted, uh, I had it entitled, um, like something like uh, belief systems that keep you into bondage. And, you know, I really want to try in this video to go a little bit more in depth with that. Um, you know, there's just a lot of Christians and I'm not talking about the world. The world's going to have their mindsets. But I'm talking about Christians who, you know, maybe they're, they're devoted to God, but there's a stopping point when it comes to, you know, really relying on Jesus and trusting him. You know, there's a lot of Christians that they more or less accept Jesus in their hearts, you know, and, you know... I'm not, stop, I'm not saying that they're not devoted whatsoever, but like I said, there's a stopping point when it comes to faith. You know, the they'll get to giving Jesus their lives, they'll read the Bible, they'll go to church on Sundays, and, but what if, if they start hearing from God, or maybe they're reading scripture one day, and they have a nudge that, hey, I, God wants them to go to another country for ministry and to minister to people. Well, what if he told them, okay, I want you to go for like a year or two years? Well, that would mean like they would have to give up their job. They would most likely have to give up their house or apartment in order to go there. So... What would they do in that place? Would they be like, okay, I'm not going to go because I would have to give these things up. Well, that's more or less what the rich man did. You know, he, he said to Jesus, all these laws that I have kept. And Jesus, it said in scripture that Jesus looked at him and loved him. He says, one thing you lack, go sell all that you have, give to the poor and come follow me. And the rich man went away sad because he had great wealth. Well, that's the stopping point with a lot of Christians in this world. That if God wanted them to quit their job and to seek him. Remember, scripture says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. Well, when you seek God, you're no longer operating in the way this world does, you're operating in another kingdom, the kingdom of God, which means you're going to rely on God and not yourself. So Mammon teaches us or teaches the world that it's all about finances. It's all about working to get rich. It's all about being financially successful and, you know, having the pride that would go with that. You know, and pushing other people who are not up to their level to do exactly what they have done. So, there is a kingdom conflict. There's the worldly kingdom that's ran by mammon. That's one kingdom. That's what everyone follows. That's what everyone lives by. Well, when God had told me to start my rest in 2008... There was a kingdom conflict, you know, and everything that I had learned in the world where, you know, I couldn't marry because I first had to be financially successful before I do. That was a belief system that I learned in this world. And I'm like, at my position, I'm like, I'm never going to marry then because if this is the case, then, you know, more or less I'm screwed, you know, because I, I wasn't there. And so... Like I said, there is a worldly conflict with, you know, heaven. So when you surrender your will to Jesus, I'm not talking about surrendering your life. A lot of Christians do that, but there's a stopping point, like I had said. When you surrender your will, you're no longer following what you want to do. You're following Jesus. You're hearing him. It's more or less like being in the military. Jesus is our commanding officer. So 
if he tells us, you know, we go to seek him every day for orders. So that means that we have put ourselves up and we're going to do what he wants us to do. So he's like, okay, well, well, what I want you to do is I want you to quit your job and I want you to seek me, which Jesus told me to do, which means that it was the end of mammon. It was the end of following the worldly kingdom and following Jesus. That's what life was all about then. So once I surrendered to Jesus, you know, I, I was more or less getting my commanding, you know, my marching orders every day. You know, he told me different things. He was showing me the way the world functions, what I had adopted, all these belief systems, and he more or less told me that they were crap. And so, if you hold on to the worldly belief systems, if you hold on to what this world has told you, then they are like chains that are holding you back from following God. So, what does Jesus do with chains? Well, he breaks them. And that's what we need to really do, is to seek Jesus at that moment. And when you get your marching orders from Jesus, there then is the end of mammon, the end of the worldly conflict, and it's all about following what Jesus wants you to do. So then you're living by the kingdom. And, you know, the worldly kingdom and the heavenly kingdom operate by two different sets of laws. And a good example of this is this world teaches you that you need to save, that you need to prepare, you know, save money for any kind of contingency. And you have to, you know, work to be financially successful things like that. But when you come to Jesus, he tells us that we need to trust him. And so you're putting up that worldly mindset. You know, for example, David wanted Joab to take a census of Israel because he wanted to know how many fighting men he had. And Joab couldn't understand those orders. Because David had always trusted God. Why did he need to know, you know, how many men he had in his army? So G David eventually learned that he sinned by that. And it showed a lack of faith in what God can do. And if you recall, God dwindled Gideon's army down to a couple of hundred men. And he said, okay, now go out and battle. Why did he do that? Well... God wanted to show his power and what he can do. Uh, so similarly, you know, this world teaches us that it's all about gaining wealth. It's all about being prideful in your financial status. But when you come to God, you know, he says, I want you to put up your finances and rely totally on me. So you have that option at that moment to either listen to God or, or to keep following the world. And like I said, there is a stopping point with a lot of Christians regarding trust. So, I had stated in the other video that, you know, what belief systems do you have that's keeping you back from following God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? You know, do you lack trust in Jesus and his provision? So, it's, it really takes, you know, writing down what you believe, your belief system, everything you learn from this world. And it's having that resolve to no longer walk in that area anymore. And when you resolve to say, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. You know, I've learned that, you know... It's all about saving. And when you realize what Jesus has done and how he has provided, he's provided so many times for me in the past. You can check my older videos out and you can see the examples of what he's done. So when you learn what God can do, 
and you learn that he provides for what you need and he takes care of you, then you're like, you know what? I really don't need, you know, to save like I have been. Now, I'm not saying, I mean, I really feel like it's all about following what Jesus wants you to do. You know, if you're saving money for any kind of contingency, I mean, you really need to get your marching orders from him to find out what you need to do in that aspect. But if you're saving money, does that stop you from relying on Jesus? What if Jesus wants you to rely on him for anything that you need? You know, you, you don't see, you know, Jesus said, I mean, you don't see, first of all, all the prophets of God saving. You didn't see Elijah saving. You didn't see Elisha saving. You've seen that Jesus provided for them. And so Jesus also said that, you know, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow, reap, or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. So this world tells you that you need to save. Well, Jesus said the complete opposite. So there is a mindset there. And there's belief systems from that that you need to cut. So I had to pause the video because I always uh, picked my mother up from the store and brought her home. So I wrote down, you know, some belief systems that I have learned that you may also agree with, you know, that you have also had. But, um, I did say that if you want to commit your will to Jesus, if you do, then you must focus on the heavenly kingdom and the way the laws are. And I said, get rid of anything holding, holding you back. You know, if you hold on to the worldly way of doing things, then really you're being held back. You're not walking fully for the kingdom. You're not walking in trust with Jesus. So I have learned that you must hear Jesus daily. You have to make time for him. Like, you know, we are subordinates in the military. So he is our commanding officer. Why else is he called the head of the body of Christ? And, you know, unfortunately, it's like, the body of Christ as of now, from what I have seen, you know, it's not moving to the wishes of the head. They're doing their own thing. I guess you could say it's, you know, bodily paralysis. You know, each member of the body is supposed to receive their marching orders from the head. And that we don't do that as the body of Christ. And so I really firmly believe this message really can move people into the place that they need to be in Jesus. That, you know, it's giving up your will and your way of following the world and it's living for Jesus and following the heavenly kingdom. So like I said, you must hear him daily and you must seek him regarding any wor worldly worries that you have. And, you know, if you keep into that place of fear with these worldly worries, then that holds you back. So it's getting into that place with Jesus saying, Lord, you know my needs. You want me to seek you. You want me to give up the job that I have because that's what your orders are. And so, Lord, since you want me to do that, I ask that you would provide for these bills. And that's what he had done for me. When he told me to, you know, cease from working and to rest in him, what I did was I sought him for the bills that I had. And so he provided for whatever I needed. I needed food. He provided for that. There was a, a bill I needed paid and he provided for that. So he was teaching me in this to trust myself less and to trust him more. And, you know, it's like scales, you know? And so this is the way we function in this world. This is all the worries right here that we have in this world. It's us trusting ourselves. It's us relying on ourselves to get bills to paid and working overtime full time if we need to, 
to pay any bill. But when we relinquish our will, give our will to Jesus, surrender to him, and we start trusting him for things. Well, Jesus, I need food. Well, he provides. So then you're like, oh, okay. So then, you know, he provides. So therefore the scale starts moving. And so he provides again. And then it's like that. And so we're trusting ourselves less. He keeps providing. And so then we're at that place to where we're fully just trusting in Jesus. And so, you know, that's what Jesus had led me into doing. So the more that you ask Jesus, the more he provides, and the more that you can see with your physical eyes what he can do. So then you're not worrying anymore. You're totally relying on him. So then we get to the belief systems that we had in this world, you know, where we learned that we have to trust ourselves and stuff like that. So when he starts providing, we're like, okay, I need to get rid of this belief system because it's not true. Then we learn, you know, God helps those who help themselves isn't true. Because that's, you know, about man doing it for, you know, himself without any outside help. So we get rid of that belief system, which I had stated in chapter one of my first book, Who Is Your Provider? Okay, another belief system in our mindset that I had was, okay, before I married, I had to have a good paying job. I had to have money saved. I had money, have to have money saved for a 401k, for retirement, saved for any contingencies. Well, when he started providing for me, then I realized, okay, none of this is important because he provides, he takes care of us. So then we really need to seek him about things that we haven't done before. We need to seek him in his direction about what to do in different circumstances. And of course, I'm not telling people to, you know, jump in fully. I had to learn step by step to trust God, but maybe there's some people out there that would just really commit it all. And I applaud those people. So being successful before you married, I realized that that was a belief system that chains you down. It keeps you in that place of bondage to where you have to work continuously to get these things that the world tells you that you need to get. When, when you realize that it keeps you into bondage, that, you know, love is more important then you get rid of that mindset. You get rid of that belief system. So I got rid of that. So then it, the world tells you that you need to save, you need to prepare things like, well, since Jesus told us not to, he takes care of the birds of the air, how much more us. And since he provided for me in the past, what would be the reason why we would save? And if we have those reasons and you set them next to scripture, you know, does it hold water? Is it really needed? So then you need to find out if, you know, that is really needed at that time. You know, a lot of stuff that we hold up against scripture and the truth of the word, we realize that it's not true. Any of the stuff that we learned in this world. So, and we need to get rid of it. Another thing we learned in this world is you know, looking down on the less fortunate. You see a homeless person, well, you you may have thought and you learned from the world that I'm not going to help them. God helps those who help themselves. Let them get a job. But you, you know, when you set that next to the love of God and you see God as the provider and how he really feels about the homeless and the less fortunate, that he doesn't have a judgment against them, you get rid of that belief system and you walk in, you know, an area that you haven't before. Maybe you haven't given that money, you know, to them before. Maybe you haven't given food to them before. Well, if you haven't, then that's a belief system that you need to get, need to get rid of. And so then you would start helping them. You know, of course, 
it depends on what Jesus wants you to do. Does he want you to give money to them? That's why it's really important to seek him. You know, I've learned myself that there's a lot of scammers out there. So if somebody's coming up to me and saying, do you have a few bucks so I can get some food? I'll say, I'll get you some food. You know, there was like one time I had my son in the car and I always want him to see, you know, by action, how we should treat the less fortunate. So this guy walks up to the car. My son heard that. And he thinks this guy asked for money to get food. I said, well, I'll get you food. And he says, no. So he was denying it. So I insisted, I will get you food and I will meet you back here. And he's like, okay. So I get him food. I come back and he's gone. So he just wanted money for, could have been drugs. So there's a lot of scammers out there that would do that. So you'd really need to hear Jesus at that moment and what you need to do. So you, you realize that God loves everyone. God loves the less fortunate. And he had a law in scripture that anybody that owned a vineyard, don't pass over it a second time getting what was left. Leave it for the widow. Leave it for the foreigner. So God's, and leave it for the orphan. So God was thinking about the less fortunate. <clears throat> That's what um, Boaz did. He, he told his men to leave Ruth alone and let her get what was left. So she brought it home to Naomi. So that was compassion. And another mindset, and I'm going to end with this, is trusting yourself needs to go. We've learned in this world, God helps those who help themselves. That if you need something, you need to work for it. And stuff like that. Well, number one, we need to see God and what he wants us to do. Number two, we need to learn who he is and that he is the source and he's the provider. So when he starts coming through for the things that we need, we, you know, like that scale, we need to get rid of that belief system, knowing that he can come through for our needs. So <clears throat> I hope this helped you. And I would just say that, you know, write down any other belief systems that may have come into your mind while I was speaking and write down any other belief systems. What belief systems do you have that's keeping you from fully following the kingdom of God? And, you know, each of these belief systems, like I said in the other video, is like chains holding us down. But once you start walking in an alternate way, in the way of the kingdom, these chains are broken. And you no longer have anything holding you back from fully following Jesus. So I'm going to end things here. Thank you for taking the time to watch.